Hey guys, Ivan here, and in today's video, we're gonna talk about the biggest surprises of the 2024 Mr. Olympia. And the first guy we're gonna talk about is Derek Lunsford. Why Derek Lunsford? Why is he on this list? You're wondering. Well, yesterday, when I made my disappointments video, I wasn't sure whether to include Derek here or to leave him for the surprises video because yeah he disappointed in terms of he didn't bring the conditioning he didn't look as good as he as we expected like if you guys watch my videos if you if you follow me for like a year you probably remember in the off season i was criticizing derek very much for not really bulking in the off season for not really pushing the weight for not growing because my logic was if he wants to show up with better conditioning more details especially in the in the front upper body like uh, chest and shoulders and with bigger legs i thought he needed to get bigger so he can afford to die down harder and not lose the fullness and size in the legs and basically everywhere so he can be the same size like last year just with more conditioning meaning more details and then towards the end of his prep when he was posting all those awesome chest training and shoulder training videos under basically perfect lighting i thought well maybe hunter ambud knows what he's doing i mean he knows more than me of course so i thought maybe that was the best strategy if he pushed the weight maybe he would like blow out his midsection and this way he can stay the same size and just work on his details work on conditioning and actually improve and, and show up better that didn't happen that definitely didn't happen he actually showed up looking worse than last year conditioning was worse legs were even smaller because i think his back grew so his legs looked smaller in comparison so you know in that sense he did disappoint but what was surprising is that he placed that low who expected that i think most people actually thought he was gonna win again you know, that's kind of what we expected him to show up a little bit improved and just win again but he actually didn't just lose but he went all the way down to third so in that sense his placement was a surprise to me at least and now the next big surprise and i'm sure all of you will agree with me on this one is samson actually winning especially after he's showing at the france pro and then also after taking his shirt off at the press conference at that point he did not look like he improved conditioning at all at least that's the way it looked on the live stream but if you guys remember i made a video another video after that where we could see samson from a different angle and it was a video that the wesley Vissers took and i said at that point that actually samson doesn't look that bad it seemed like he was holding a little bit of water and i said if he didn't dehydrate at all at this point and if his plan is to dehydrate only at the last moment the night before and the day of the show then maybe he can actually pull out pretty good conditioning and that's exactly what happened he switched things very very much in that last day and showed up actually looking drier than ever and of course ended up winning the mr olympia which was a crazy moment i mean after the pre-judging and after the finals i thought it could happen i thought he did look the best i just for some reason thought they were still gonna give it to derek because they gave him last year and that was a very controversial decision they could have given it to hardy last year so i thought this year if he is close enough they might give it to him again but when they put Derek in third and it was between Hardy and Samson at that moment I pretty much knew I was like 80% sure at that moment that uh, Samson has won the Mr. Olympia but still it was a huge surprise it was something I was waiting for for years I really wanted to see him do it I thought he had the best physique in the world it was all about finally cracking that conditioning and once he figured it out with the help of his wife and that guy from Eric Health as well and whatever he was doing with training and everything he did it he finally brought it it was just good enough it was probably not the best conditioning on the stage they were definitely leaner guys but for him with his size with his muscle with his shape it was simply good enough now did samson improve muscularity wise well i don't think he really needs to grow any more muscle but the last couple of years every time we saw him step on stage he was bigger in one body part or the other however at this show it's not like he was bigger but he was more conditioned and he actually held the same size and i think his waist was smaller his abs were better his midsection control was perfect and even though he got leaner i think he was also pretty lean at the arnold classic uh, uk but he was very flat there 
Here he actually brought the fullness, with conditioning, with dryness, and he actually looked amazing. Him and his wife and the guy from Merrick Health did a perfect job with his prep, he came better than ever, he was calm on the stage, he was confident, his posing was also perfect as well, he was a true professional, he gave it all of his into this prep, he proved something to us, and he is the best bodybuilder in the world right now. Alright, the next really big freaking surprise was Mike Sommerfeld placing second to Chris Bumstead and actually it wasn't a clear-cut win for Chris, it was actually, I wouldn't say close, but a few judges actually thought that Mike should have won the Mr. Olympia, that's right, so he managed to beat guys like Ramon Dino, Urs Kalecinski, uh Wesley Wiesers and the others, and last year I think he was like 6th or 7th, Two years ago, I think he was fourth, but last year, no, and, you know, based on what we saw, like, if you guys followed him in the offseason, he looked like he was switching to the Open, that's how big he looked, I really thought he was switching to bodybuilding, 212 or the Open, but apparently he was simply putting on muscle so he can afford to get this conditioned, this dry, this lean, and actually look pretty freaking big on that stage, pretty dense. And again, this was a huge, huge freaking surprise because nobody had him second in their Mr. Olympia prediction. And after the show was done, who would have thought that he was actually close? I mean, relatively close, but who would have thought that Chris didn't win with a perfect score like he does every single year since 2019? This is the first time for the last five years somebody actually gave Chris a run for his money. Some judges, a few of them once again, thought that Mike should have been the new Mr. Olympian classic physique. How crazy is that? Now, if I was gonna criticize his physique, I mean, I like his physique, it was a great physique. He was conditioned, he was shredded, he was full, he was massive, he was aesthetic, he was classic. The only flaw that I can find is that his delts are not really that capped, they are not really that round and the separation between the shoulder and the chest is not that prominent and the other thing would also be uh, the hamstrings in comparison to his glutes i would like to see more hamstrings so that's something he can work on for the next year but as long as he brings the same level of conditioning i mean if he actually pushed chris bumstead can anybody else really defeat him next year as long as he's on like he was here well in my opinion yeah i think ramon dino if he is truly on he can beat him, and I think Wesley Vissers also has a chance, maybe Mike is going to be off and disappoint next year and play sixth again, and that's classic physique, it's not like in the open where we kind of know who is going to be top three, who is going to be top six based on the guy's size, but in classic physique everybody is basically maxed out in terms of muscularity, they have their shape, it's all about how well they peak, how conditioned they are, you know, Wesley Wissers beat all of these guys except for Chris Bumstead at the Arnold Classic and then he lost to everybody basically and placed 8. So you never know who's gonna be the next Mr. Olympia, but if everybody is on, then yeah, Mike probably has the best chance because uh, Ramon was very much on next year and every single judge gave it to Chris. And Ramon was off at the Arnold Classic and it was a very close win for Wesley. So unless some of these guys improve dramatically, Based on what we saw at this show, Mike definitely has the biggest chance to win the Mr. Olympia as long as he is off, but who's to guarantee that? We'll see though, next year's Mr. Olympia Classic Physique is going to be super exciting now that Chris is retired, but Mike Sommerfeld is definitely the favorite and that is a huge surprise. Alright, the next guy that was a very, very big surprise was Martin Fitzwater, who managed to crack the top four, he took fourth spot at his first Mr. Olympia. Guys, when was the last time something like that happened? I know it happened a couple of times back, all the way back in the 90s, like uh, Dorian Yates placed second at his first Mr. Olympia in 1991, in 1992 Kevin Levroni also took second at his first Mr. Olympia, 1993... Flex Wheeler took second at his Mr. Olympia debut, if I remember correctly, but in the recent history, I know uh, Nick Walker placed fifth, but as far as uh, somebody placing fourth or higher, I don't know if we can include Derek, because he was already a 212 Mr. Olympia, but as far as somebody not competing at a Mr. Olympia ever, showing up for the first time and placing fourth, I don't know when was the last time something like that happened, so it was a huge, huge, massive surprise, 
Look at Martin's legs, man. His legs were freaking insane. He came in blasting full, super shredded as well, dug out in the, in the chest, in the shoulders, shoulders were really capped out, uh, hamstrings, glutes, everything was freaking peeled, he was full, he was massive for his height of course, he was even in some conversations of placing as high as third, but as far as the scorecard goes, it didn't seem like that, the judges actually had Derek very firmly in that third, they wouldn't put him that low, come on guys, fourth, but I think Martin was also pretty close to Derek. He definitely did beat him in some shots, like most muscular, for sure, he did beat Derek, I mean, he was in the top 4 call out, so maybe some judges actually thought that he could, you know, push and, and actually crack the top 3. Absent eyes as well, for some reason this year Derek didn't even do the vacuum instead of the absent eyes, he was actually trying to flex his abs, but nothing was happening, there was no details in the midsection, legs also didn't look good at all in this pose, so Martin actually did beat Derek in a couple of shots. So Martin was a huge surprise, after Nick Walker fell out, I thought we all thought he actually is gonna be in the top 5, but to beat Andrew Jacked? Who thought that was gonna happen? I mean, I thought and I said that there is a possibility of that happening if Andrew, uh, just like every year, fails at a Mr. Olympia and doesn't bring the best peak. But again, I was still like 80% sure that it was gonna be Andrew uh, no matter what. However, Martin managed to crack the top four and actually pushed Derek in a couple of poses. He actually beat him. So once these older guys retire, Martin is most likely going to be one of the top guys, one of the contenders for the title. I mean, Samson and Hadi are like 37, 36, both of them, I think Hadi might be even 38, so I'm not saying they're on their way out, they actually have a lot, of, a lot of time left as well, but Martin is only 27, he's like 10 or more years younger than them, and if Nick was at this show, I think Martin would beat him. I don't think it was that close in the scorecard at the New York Pro because they wanted to punish Nick for not being on, I think it was simply because Martin was uh, that good, now I see it, now I believe it, so I think even if Nick showed up, Nick would probably be 5th and Martin would still be 4th and next year, who knows, maybe he's actually gonna go up to top 3. And the last guy I thought I should mention as well, it wasn't a huge surprise, but Urs Kalicinski came back and uh, this time around beat Wesley Wissers, beat Ramon, uh, beat uh, Brion Ainsley as well, and uh, was in the first call out with Chris Bumstead and Mike Sommerfeld, um, he actually placed third, uh, he was bigger, he was fuller, I think he improved, especially in the back, a little bit in the arms as well, maybe his chest came up too, he was definitely bigger and fuller, not a massive surprise, but I'm pretty sure we all thought that he was gonna be below Ramon and below Wesley, but did he improve that much or were the other two guys just really off? I think it was the latter more so, but Urs also did improve, so he was also somewhat of a surprise. And that's gonna do it for this video, guys, if you liked this video, if you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up for more Mr. Olympia and all kinds of bodybuilding content, stay tuned, guys, subscribe to this channel, Thank you so much for watching, see you soon, all the best and bye bye.